So this is a little bit about connection with a place, and it's partly also about the critical voices that I tend to carry in my head. Voices in my head. You should be writing more. You should be writing better. If you were writing more, you would be writing better. Most successful writers have an agent. Most successful writers have published books and have an agent long before they are 48. I am closer to 50 than to 40, closer to old age than to youth. I may not get to old age. I will not be discovered, though I hope to get something published before I kick off. I could kick off at any time, but not before the Cleveland Browns win the Super Bowl or the Indians win the World Series, which will keep me around to the next millennium because Cleveland teams do not win, rarely win, almost never win. Why do you care? Why do I care? Genetic coding, DNA, tribal feelings, a bad childhood, sad childhood, moments of pain. Strep throat, measles, mumps, hit by a car, scarred by a fish tank. My body is a map of accidents and bad decisions that tie me to the place I come from like a lasso, a square knot, or heavy engineer's duct tape. My father was an engineer, a Clevelander born and bred, as was my mother. She was not a sports fan, and my dad followed the Cleveland Indians only when they won, but I can blame them them and the Jewish people who bred them for my low sense of my low self-esteem, my deep sense of place, my Midwestern roots that cannot be torn up by sheer force of will, but require an excavator, a backhoe, or some other earth-moving equipment that my nephew could identify at age four, but which I cannot name. <laughs> name what? Middle age. I am middle-aged which is not for pussies, not for sissies. But I am a sissy in the gay community where getting older is valued slightly less than facial boils. <laughs> Growing less young, which my younger brother, who's happily married to a woman he met at age 17, says beats the alternative. Sometimes I'm not sure, though. Lately I think so, as I've learned to be happy or at least less sad. Sad is not so bad. After years of depression, not the lie in bed, stay under the cover sleepiness of some, but my own version, the style I learned from my mother, blending her anxiety and my own shame, restless, nervous, can't sit still, I've calmed down some, can breathe some, can see better. Better. Life is getting better and I'm getting more Buddhist or Judas. <laughs> Accepting what is, especially if it's not too bad. I sweat the small stuff a little less, mild perspiration instead of a conniption fit. Fit for the day, for the week, for the gym. My doctor said I should be working out more, 40 minutes, four times a week, but the Stairmaster is a drag. Though it does have a TV monitor and 42 channels and I'm locked in the cable, which I do not have at home because I'd watch too much TV, and I can view at the gym and not feel guilty because I am working out. <laughs> working out. Things are working out this year. The Indians did not make the playoffs did not win the World Series again. This is to be expected, to be accepted, to be, to be born stoically, not to complain, kvetch, bitch. I want to change teams, change dreams, find a boyfriend. Boyfriend. I have boyfriends, but not a lover, the companion, the one. I have my cat, a calico named Santosh, whose name means contentment. She is often content, though not lately. She's not happy with me. I'm away too much like my father was, and why didn't I call? <laughs> I've let her down, but she forgives me, purrs her mechanic purr, and climbs, and climbs on my chest, a deep, rumbling, meditative ohm that soothes me and brings me back to this moment in which I'm still alive. So that was a little bit of a trip inside my head, and I wrote that out of frustration about four years ago when the Indians lost six of their last seven games, missed the playoffs by one game, and the Red Sox got in. Okay. So the second piece 
is, uh, I mean, my book is basically a memoir and the pieces are in prose, but this is the prologue to the book. And uh, it's about the place I come from and the identification I have with it. It's called Cleveland is a Plum, 1981. So much remains to be written of a city doused, doused in ash. The gates of shuttered steel mills and empty docks echo in eerie silence. Purgatory on a cold gray lake fed by a flammable river. Slicing winds and knee-deep snows embraced the locals like a lover. Anything was possible here, so my parents said, a 1940s boom-boom Midwestern town, brewing beer and smelting steel, a mecca for the working man. In 48, the Indians won the World Series and Truman beat Dewey. Cleveland could do no wrong. Sixth largest city, anything was possible here. Then came the riots, dreams delayed too long, progressive Cleveland standing still, ethnic feuds among the clans, free-flowing fear led whites to a promised land outside the city limits. Our first black mayor came and went, beaten by the system, and I was born in the suburbs of this once great city that smelled of smoking wood and broken dreams and a lake called dead. Cleveland has the football Browns and the baseball tribe. Blacks and whites mix freely at the games, driven by the hunger to be the best, but we never are. The Indians lose most every game, most every year, and I love them more fiercely for that. I sit on splintered wood and cheer them on as fans grow sparse and fall winds come to our cold city on its stagnant lake. The Cleveland Press was my newspaper, my daily route, I ate the sports pages before dinner. Now the printing presses are still forever. The plain dealer is left alone, a plain paper for a shrinking city. Cleveland is a plum, the PD crows, or dried like a prune, I think. Anything was possible here, so my parents said, and why was it my fate to watch the rotting of those dreams echo in eerie silence? Thank you. Thank you.